Hey, how's it going? Gareth James here for mttpokerschool.com and this is part four of my $22 mini Sunday million chop review. Let's get into the action. So this is the hand we left off on. Obviously pretty easy fold with the king seven off. Uh, probably gonna be folding four three. Uh, looks like we've got a table change now, three two, queen four. Just gonna quickly run through these hands. If we're not gonna play them, uh, it should be pretty pretty quick to, to get through it. Um, and sometimes you just get a gift. So uh, this is a pretty nice situation. The guy's jamming for about 22, 23 bigs from, uh, from the hijack. And uh, yeah, it's just a very easy call with the queens. Nice hand us. Now we have ace three of diamonds. And we'll get a walk. Ten six, raising early position and a call. We're just going to fold. Let's see if we play this queen eight offsuit. This is a raise. We're just going to fold. Uh, ace three of hearts. You might play this one. Okay, so we see a limp, and we've got a couple of options here. We could isolate uh, by raising. Or we could limp behind. Now we do have two stacks behind who can shove. Um, the original limper has a stack that he can definitely shove when we when we raise. Uh, so I'm kind of happy. We could just limp, uh, I think. I don't know what I choose, chose to do. Uh, I think limping's okay. We then get to play a pot against the big blind who has, you know, a lot of chips. And yeah, I think this is just, this is just okay. Um, we're going to get shoved on and raised a, a fair amount of the time. Uh, this is a really weird spot now. I don't know what I chose to do. I, I say it's weird just because this guy's now flat, uh, flatted a, you know, a huge chunk of his stack. Uh, that's kind of, kind of weird. And also, this guy is flatting. You know, he had under ten bigs at the start of the hand. The button did, and now he's he's calling. And um, yeah, this is lots of weird things going on in this hand. So. I don't know what I chose to do. Okay, I did decide to call. This has to just be simply be, be, uh, be because we get to play the hand in position against the uh, the big blind, getting pretty reasonable odds as well. Um, the downside here is that this guy can now just jam, and this guy can then rejam, and we can have to fold. So we put 14k in without even seeing a flop, which a lot of the time is just going to be a disaster. Uh, like putting that much money in without actually getting to see a flop is is pretty bad. Uh, this is the kind of board we're just going to fold on and this uh, play has already shown me that this player is probably pretty weak and the guy to our left is pretty weak as well something to keep an eye on uh, I'm not massively thrilled with with calling there but I think it's kind of okay gonna fold the queen nine queen eight jack eight seven four all of these hands are gonna be folds eight five suited it's gonna be a fold King Queen off. See a raise. And we have a decision. Again, we can flat or we can three bet. We are definitely making money here, so we definitely want to uh, VPIP. It's the case of do we make more money by three betting or by flatting? Uh, he has about 35, 40 bigs at the start of the hand. Yeah, closer to 40. So, you know, if we three bet any jams like a it's pretty pretty bad for us, um, but we do have some great blockers to his four betting range, which is going to be hands like kings, queens, ace king, and ace queen. So turning this hand essentially into a bluff, but then having you know pretty decent equity when when called, like when he calls the three bet out position, is is going to be absolutely fine. Um, if we flat and then either of the blinds chooses to shove, then again it's going to be pretty close, especially calling the the big blind. Uh, the guy to our left, though, I think it's the same guy we just said was not particularly, not particularly good, limping off like eight bigs. So he's probably not three bet shoving as a squeeze here particularly uh, wide. Therefore, we might be able to f find the fold against him. Uh, the big blind, though, probably have to have to call if the original raiser chooses to uh, chooses to fold. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't know what I chose to do. I did just choose to call. I think it's worth thinking about, you know, when you call in position here, it's much better if like the players behind you have like 30 bigs or more because the likelihood of them squeezing 
uh, is much much lower. Like here, the both both blinds have a real incentive to just jam and pick up you know, a huge pot. Like there's twenty k in the middle. That's like half of the big blind stack already. So we do have to be a little bit careful here. Um, but if our plan is to call the big blind and fold to the small blind, I think that's probably probably okay. I uh, will see a check. So a lot of players will just check and give up. Um, we're seeing a lot more checks out of position. Sorry, yeah, so when a, when a player is playing out of position, seeing a lot more checks, especially on this kind of board that really doesn't favor them that well. Uh, so I don't necessarily think this is going to be a spot where we can bet all the time and expect him to just, just give up. Um, we do have still have some showdown value. thing is we don't really have any opportunity to barrel the turn in the river. It's not like there's you know one high card like a ten or a jack where we can then turn a gut shot or turn a, an open ender or something like that. So I think this is probably just going to be a check and just see what happens. But this was a while ago, so I don't know what I chose to do. And we've said all of that, and we chose to bet small. Um, maybe we had a read at the time that this guy was just going to be giving up a lot of the time. You know, we do have all the sets. We do have seven six. We do have uh, some over pairs to get value from, um, but yeah, I think this is just going to happen quite a lot of the time. Five of uh, spades on the turn, so a lot of the hands he calls with, he's going to call with like ace king, ace queen, ace jack. A lot of them with backdoor flush draws. Now we know that he can't have a hand like ace king of spades or king queen of spades to check call now because we got the king of spades. So I think we can potentially go ahead and bet here. He's going to now fold like ace king of hearts, ace queen of clubs you know those kind of hands that that floated the flop um with you know two overs and a backdoor flush draw and now just have to go ahead and, and give up um i said ace queen of clubs he obviously can't have ace queen of clubs because we have the queen of clubs uh so yeah we now choose to check i think if we were going to bet the flop we should probably just bet the turn you know we have a full house we have quads we have a straight we have uh pairs that benefit from protection so i don't think this check is particularly good uh, he checks again. I think he just has a lot of hands that we can get to fold on the river. Um, but the problem is by betting the turn, we really um, it's going to be difficult to to sell the story. I don't know what I chose to do. I chose, chose to check. I guess it's just because of the lousy check on the turn. I'm not really thrilled with the way I played this hand. I think we just we want to just continue betting on the turn. Like he sometimes has sixes and sevens. We'll probably call the turn we should probably just you know go for three streets here uh we definitely get sixes and sevens to fold i'm pretty pretty confident in that uh but yeah it's really tough to tell the story like what hands are we betting flop and then checking turn and then betting river with it'd have to be like some sort of like king jack or ace jack maybe a jack 10 that we just given up with but i think the hand that a lot of those hands like king jack jack 10 benefit from betting the turn so we just don't get to the river with many jack x hands uh, i wonder if we can still value better hand like nines and tens here yeah uh, yeah he ends up having ace jack uh so pretty confident he would have folded on the turn um pretty glad as well that we didn't try and get him off on the river um that's a pretty pretty wide float but you see uh what i was saying earlier about players checking out of position especially on this kind of board um, but not necessarily checking to giving uh, to give up. Uh, I think this is uh, potentially just a check give up. We did bet fairly small on the flop, but I think he really wants to have some kind of backdoor draw to go with his uh, showdown value uh, rather than just having you know, ace high. Uh, but yeah, not particularly happy with the way I played that hand, and that's uh, you know the beauty of review is that we can uh, we can see some of these uh, some of these hands. Okay, going to raise here with the ace-10 off. Defend in the big blind. Uh, again, we've got a couple of options. We can choose to check or, or bet. I don't know what I chose to do. I chose to bet small. I think with these the stacks the way they are, I think betting big straight away applies quite a lot of pressure. Um, if this guy is just you know really straightforward, let's say that he's only check raising here with two pair or better, then we are incentivized to bet very, very small with a lot of our range because he's going to continue with a call with a lot of his range. And then when he raises, we can be, you know, pretty confident in, in what his range looks like. Um, so we do manage to get this through with the, with the small C bet. Um, so maybe that, that was the reason why. 
Okay, pocket threes in the big blind. See a raise, very easy call here. He bets small, we have the three of diamonds. I think we're supposed to call here. I'm gonna guess that you know when this tournament was played, I ended up folding, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think given that we have a pair and a diamond, we need to call here versus the third pot. Um, but I folded and it's probably a, you know, a small mistake, but not a huge one. And making a small mistake is obviously gonna be, um, you know, it's not ideal but it's certainly better than making a huge, huge mistake. Like having a few small mistakes here and there is not gonna um, cost us as much as like one huge mistake. Queen 10 offsuit, again, have a look at the stacks uh, behind. We've got some short stacks, sub 15 big blind stacks behind. We do have some decent blockers to their shoving range, like the queen is gonna block hands like queens and ace queen and king queen, uh, queen jack suited, uh, even queen 10 suited, queen 9 suited, hands that would 3-bet jam here. And then the 10 is going to block 10s and ace 10 and maybe 10-9 suited, jack 10 suited, those kind of hands. So I think the raise is fine. Um, we get shoved on. We're getting a pretty decent price here. Uh, I'm just going to run this in HRC and, and have a look. I think in-game I just folded. Yeah. Um, but I just want to see, you know, what range of hands he's supposed to be shoving and then what range of hands... I should be calling. Okay, so this is the range that I've given us. I think this is reasonable. I think from the cutoff, you know, we can definitely open a lot wider, but we do have the uh, button and the small blind who can he can jam. So I don't think we want to go, you know, a standard cutoff raise if everyone uh, range even. If you know, if everyone had the same stack size as us, then we can definitely raise wider. Um, but here. Uh, decided to go a little bit uh, a little bit tighter and we can see then that the small blind can jam all of these hands 18% uh, of hands and then our response to that is to go ahead and call all of these hands we'll change the background color to EV so we can see how profitable a lot of these hands are you can see Queen 10 offsuit definitely not in that range so we don't have to um, feel like we you know overfolding in this spot and we can also see like a lot of these hands are going to be pretty marginal. 9-7 suited, 7-6 suited looks to be pretty marginal. A6 off, pretty marginal. But there's lots of really profitable spots here as well. Now, when you're running these spots in uh, HRC, Hold and Resources Calculator, it can be good to just have a look and see if you think this is a reasonable range. Uh, if you've got to read that this player is a little bit tighter, you know, maybe he's, he doesn't understand that he can shove as wide as 18% of hands. Then you can just uh, you can use this blue dial. Or you can actually you know, go in and edit these hands just to see you know, what, how um, how tight or wide you think he's actually shoving. Um, so you know if we went with a tighter range, you can now see that a lot of these hands are going to be unprofitable now. Uh, so we should only be going with like a pairs plus a ten off, ace nine suited, and the ace nine suited is looking pretty marginal now. King queen off is looking pretty marginal, um, but you've got a lot of these suited broadways that are doing doing okay um and we you know we should be we should be calling it should be calling there but here it's just a very easy fold which we do and we move on to the next hand six four suited probably just gonna be a fold four three queen five well these are gonna be folds okay so a suited connector in the big blind okay so we see a raise and once again, I think we've got a couple of options. I think uh, calling here, you know, getting great price, getting to play the whole hand in position is good. If we three bet and get jammed on, we've lost an opportunity to realize any of our equity. And I've talked about that before. So I think all in all, we probably just want to go ahead and call here. I think uh, three betting with a worse suited connector, you know, something like a 6-3 suited, 6-2 suited that doesn't mind if it gets jammed on and doesn't get to see the flop. But this just has a huge amount of equity against a lot of the hands that the small blind is is raising, and therefore I think calling just makes the most sense. Uh, he checks on this board. Now, I don't have very many strong hands here. I think based on the stack sizes, I mean, we're looking at like 30-ish big blinds pre. I'm probably going to three bet ace-10 and better. So we don't have ace-10, we don't have ace-king. Uh, we might possibly have king 10. I mean, definitely have king 10 offsuit. Uh, we definitely have queen jack, although queen jack suited might even make its way into something like a 
jamming range for 30 big blinds. I know that sounds like overkill, uh, but sometimes it might be in there. So we do have we do have straights. Um, we do have king ten. We do have some weak ace x hands that weren't strong enough to go ahead and three bet and get it in. But I think this board is just so much better for him. And seeing him check here is kind of weird. So I'd imagine that he has some kind of showdown value hand, like uh, king jack, king queen, jack 10, queen 10, a hand that he's very comfortable checking and calling the bet out of position. So I just choose to check and give up. Uh, he checks again on the turn. I think probably just have to give this hand up. And th thankfully he chooses to bet so he can just fold. Uh, I think there's always this... Uh, idea that as soon as he checks well we have eight high we're probably not going to win if we check so we should go ahead and and bet um but i think this is just a board that is just very favorable for him and even though he checked twice here i mean he could have a, a weak ace x hand like an ace two off suit that he just decides to uh play this way uh but i think on the river he can actually go ahead and he can value bet king queen and king jack and yeah, I, I think there's this, you know, he definitely can value bet thinner than just an ace here. So we just fold, move on to the next one, 9-3, going to be a fold, 6-2, it's going to be a fold, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so the gapper in the big blind, see a raise, definitely want to go ahead and call here. Um, I don't think we want to go ahead and 3-bet doesn't make too much sense and I think we're just getting such a great price in the big blind that we want to be defending with these kind of hands I think we can three bet with some you know the lo lower suited connectors again uh, that have a bit of playability but a lot of the, those hands are just going to make a lot of money by clicking the call button so really if we're looking at you know wanting to three bet a polarized range here which we should be because we're doing a lot of flatting then there's some argument for three betting hands that don't make money by calling. So if this hand makes money by calling, it doesn't make too much sense but, uh, to three bet it. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, okay, but a lot of the time, some of these three bets, like the you know something like a seven six or a nine eight suited, is going to make more money by three betting. Um, and I think that's that's fair, but it's very difficult to um, to simulate. And we know that this is just going to make a lot of money by calling. So calling seems to be absolutely fine. Say so off, pretty big. Looks was a three X from a great screen name. Let's move on. Okay, making raise. Um, pretty close again. If this guy shoves, I mean, it's probably a chip EV call, but uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be shoving correctly. This guy on the other hand uh, shoves. Now, these kind of hands do do fairly well. Uh, raise uh, being a raise call uh, sorry a raise fold because they block a lot of the ace x hands that your opponent's going to go ahead and shove um now again there's an argument that you could just go ahead and shove here and i think it is profitable to shove in this spot but raise fold is i would say is lower variance and you know against straightforward players playing in that way where you just you make a move and it kind of forces your opponents to play pretty honestly, then it's just going to save you chips in the long run. You know, I, I feel like a lot of players will three bet jam here in the same range that they call when we shove. And that's obviously a mistake. But if that's the case, then we should raise fold rather than just go ahead and shove. Okay, pretty decent hand. Probably going to play this one. Open it up and everyone folds. Queen 10 off, easy fold. Jack 10 suited, probably gonna play this one. We raise, and everyone folds. Um, I'm not sure at what stage of the tournament this is now. Maybe we're getting fairly deep. Everyone's playing pretty, pretty snug. We shall see. Okay, just gotta fold here. Pocket eights. Okay, pretty easy call, I think, here with the eights. Let's check, check. Oh, interesting spot. Uh, so he bets half pot here. We don't close the action here. Um, I'd like to have the eight of hearts, honestly. 
But I do think it's a spot where the imposition player can just bet a lot of hands and expect two folds. So we're probably supposed to call or raise here. I don't know what I chose to do. I'm really hoping that I didn't fold, but I may well have done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think I think we have to continue. I think our hands are too strong, and too good to just fold here. I mean, if we you know we're not continuing here, then what are we continuing with? Are we just continuing with flush draws and trips and better like that just doesn't make sense so i think this is again like the king queen hand earlier i think this is uh it's pretty poor um we should uh, we should continue now i mean there is an argument that this guy can you know we talked about how players are checking out position a lot more especially multi-way so this guy could definitely have a strong hand like there's no reason why he can't have nines tens queens kings and aces here to check call uh, there's no reason why he can't have a jack x or pocket fives to go ahead and check raise so this, it's not terrible to fold here. I don't think, I think having the eight of hearts makes it a slightly better call. Um, but yeah, I think we probably need to continue at some frequency. Jack eight off, see a small raise and a jam. I'm just gonna fold. Okay, pocket sevens. Ah, I seem to remember this hand. Okay, so pre-flop looking at this, um, I haven't actually reviewed this tournament before today. And looking at this now, I think this is just a very, very clear jam, uh, but I don't know what I chose to do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we're seeing quite a lot of mistakes, I think, in this part of the video. And I mean, I, I think this really does just demonstrate the importance of review. Like we're not going to play every hand perfectly, even though you know we we can analyze hands and and talk about hands after the fact, you know, away from the heat of the battle. We are going to still go ahead and make some mistakes because you know we're human and we make mistakes. And I think this is a pretty clear mistake. I think we can jam. I think it's pretty profitable jam. He's got a lot of chips. He can definitely be opening pretty wide. I mean, he does have three stacks that can shove on him. I think sevens is just going to be too good to um, uh, to, to just call here. Uh, from what I remember, this is a this is a key hand. Um, so we'll see what happens. So he bets and yeah, we just can't fold at this point. We have to have to continue, so we do call. I think we hit a great turn card. Yeah, okay. He continues to bet. Now we have two options here. We could just go ahead and and shove, but we think about our hand in terms of our range here. And I mean, honestly, I'm not sure we should be doing that much flatting here. I mean, we can definitely flat some suited Broadway hands for like 21, 22 big blinds. But a lot of these pairs are just going to go ahead and and shove. I think we can slow play like some big pairs here as well. But if our range is going to be basically pairs and flush draws at this point, then I think just calling makes a lot of sense. Yes, we could we could jam this turn with the flush draws as a bluff. But I think if we call and then the river's not a club, we can then shove the river and make it look more bluffy. Um, I think it, at this point he has a pretty, you know, a hand that's, good enough to bet two streets so if the club doesn't come on the river then he he's more incentivized to check and uh, check with some of his you know bluff catchers showdown value hands that we can then you know get a, a crying call from so that's what i chose to do i think again you'll probably go either way a uh, pretty nice river he now checks and it, we just have a really easy shove here uh, it kind of feels weird because we're betting for like around half pot, we probably should have just shoved pre. Um, but yeah, we can represent a lot of, well, a lot of missed club draws here. And so he makes the call and he has eights. And yeah, that turn card was uh, pretty big for us. Now we have pocket nines. Again, have a look at the stacks behind. Basically, if we're raising here, we're calling if anybody does anything whatsoever, but it will fold. Seven six suited. Uh, okay, so if we're ever thinking about opening this kind of hand at this stage of the tournament, or probably at any stage of the tournament, but spe specifically here, 
uh, because there's a presence of like some stacks that can shove on us, that's the, the main thing to think about. So we've got the guy to our left who has 12 bigs, he can definitely shove, and we, we're just going to have to fold. The two players to his left uh, can definitely shove for like 25, 26 bigs, and the guy in the big blind can definitely shove with 12, 13 bigs as well. So I would say if you were wanting to open this hand and wanting to sort of open up your game now with 50 bigs, that you've got to be wary of the short stacks and they're really going to harm your sort of ability to, to open these uh, these hands. So I think that's a good fold. Line three going to be a fold. They say off. Uh, we just shove here. He has 11, 12 bigs. So it's just a very, very easy shove. He calls and we hold. And we're up to 242k. Let's move on to the next hand. Ace 8, C raise, and just want to fold here. Queen Jack suited, might play this one. C raise again, and I think we can just call again. Now, again, if we're thinking, you know, we should be thinking about the stacks behind who can shove and ruin our opportunity to see a flop. And so, you know, we don't want to put in money and then fold a lot of the time. But there's only this guy, really, who can potentially shove here. I mean, the button can shove, but it's, like, what's that? 28 bigs? Something like that. So I think we're going to be able to call here pretty, pretty well. Uh, so we flop a straight draw. And he chooses to bet. I think this is the same guy as earlier. So he bet with eights on a 9x board, or 9942, two clubs board. Uh... I think we can call in position. I don't know what I chose to do. Oh, we chose to raise. Okay, uh, this is interesting. So this isn't really a board that should have much betting done on it out of position. So no, um, if he if he thinks that we have a pretty pretty condensed range here, which we 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 do, we probably don't flat too many strong hands here. Uh, we definitely don't have kings, and um, we probably you could have tens, we could have twos, we could have king ten, and then we have you know quite a lot of uh, flushes as well. That he could just go ahead and bet forty percent pot and win this hand quite a lot of the time. So if that was my idea at the time, then we're just trying to apply pressure to that range. Uh, he does just fold. I'm not sure if I you know a hundred percent behind this, but. You know, for the reasons I just gave, I think our players will just bet here and uh, give up quite a lot of the time. It would be better if we had a spade in our hand. Like if we had ace jack with a spade, obviously then, you know, we have a little bit of something to go with it. We also block him from having uh, some hands that can continue. So whether it's, you know, he's actually flopped a flush with a hand like ace jack of spades or has, you know, a, a, uh, like a queen jack with a spade, I don't know if he's opening that hand from early position, but you get the idea, like the kind of hands that we'll be able to bet call this, call this flop, if we can block some of those, it's going to be way better. Uh, so here we don't really do that, um, so I'm not 100% behind, uh, behind this play. Got three of clubs, jack two, eight, seven of diamonds. I right, see a big raise, three and a half X, I think we should just fold. See a raise and a call. Nice spot to go ahead and call. We've got 52 bigs. We're playing 40 big blinds effective. And we flop a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw, so we're definitely not folding here. Let's go ahead and call the flop. Now we flop a flush draw. Okay, so we've got a lot of outs uh, going into the river. We don't want to get blown off our equity. But also, if it goes check, if we check here and the rivers are blank, we're unlikely to win the hand. So there's there's arguments for both here. Uh, I don't think we're going to get check raised on this turn, particularly often. I don't think this guy is going to suddenly decide to check check raise here with his strongest hands because there's there's too great a chance that we can just check check back in position. So. Don't think this is a card that we get check raised on very often. Therefore, I think we should go ahead and bet. We could potentially bet turn and then jam jam river as well. Um, having said all of that, you know, this, the theme of this video is basically doing things here that I wouldn't recommend. 
of course. We just go ahead and check. Uh, yeah, I just, I just don't think we're going to get check raised particularly often here. I think we should go ahead and and bet. And yeah, we have some pretty strong hands here. We can have sets, and we can have ace queen and king queen to value bet. Um, we can occasionally have a seven six as well, like seven six of diamonds, seven six of clubs, seven six of hearts. Uh, it was a pretty small bet on the flop, so maybe even sometimes we have seven six of spades. But anyway, check check. Obviously, we get there. Uh, got to run well in these tournaments and so now we've got to decide how big to bet now when the out of position player this the original raiser chooses to check twice now he can definitely have some queen x that will call uh, it's really unlikely he has particularly strong here i think he's just capped up to one pair like that pair could be aces and kings but it could be ace queen king queen those kind of hands the guy to our right is more likely to have some sort of 8x or 9s or 10s or jacks. I mean, we do block jacks and 10s, but you can still have them. Uh, so I guess we just want to try and bet an amount that's going to get called by at least one of them with the with the queen x. Like he can still have king queen and ace queen. Um, weird for him to not go ahead and bet the turn, though. So he could have a weak queen, queen 9 suited, queen jack off, something like that. He just doesn't want to... To bet the turn with uh, so i think something like half pot is probably going to be fine here this is quite big uh, i'm trying to think so if we get to this river like do we actually get to this river with any bluffs um i guess nine ten and jack ten without a diamond so like jack ten of clubs nine ten of clubs nine ten of hearts jack ten of hearts those kind of hands uh, maybe even like a jack nine with a back door as well jack nine suited with a back door seeing as the bet was pretty small on the on the flop uh, so i guess in that sense we you know we do have a ton of a ton of bluffs a ton of incentive to go ahead and, and bet big here so i think it's probably fine i think half pot just gets more calls yeah i think we're just going to see a lot of folds on this river um but yeah pretty pretty cool hand and i think it's a good hand to to wrap up on so the theme of this video was you know seeing review as a great opportunity to to see where you're going wrong um a lot of mistakes i think in this video maybe i'm being hard on myself but it's important to do that like it's you know i'm obviously putting this video out and opening myself up to constructive feedback and that's great like if you guys want to give comments on some of the hands i played hopefully you're going to see that i made some mistakes and i made some you know some pretty good decisions so yeah if you've got thoughts or comments leave them down below uh, if you like the video, click the like button. If you like this series of videos and you want to see more, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll get the next part out as soon as possible. Cheers, guys. Take care. This has been Gareth James for mttpokerschool.com. Signing off. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for checking out this video. If you would like free strategy articles and YouTube videos and uh, free podcast episodes delivered straight to your inbox, then head over to mttpokerschool.com right now and sign up for our mailing list. I'll even throw in a free push fold guide and opening hand cheat sheet. What are you waiting for? Head to mttpokerschool.com right now.